and welcome to another episode of Seven Questions With on the Shore Sports Network, powered by Jersey Mike's Be a Sub Above. Today, we get to talk with the new head women's basketball coach at Monmouth University, Ginny Bodges. And we welcome her to the Jersey Shore, as she's been welcomed many times before. Officially announced last week during a virtual press conference that Ginny would become the ninth head women's basketball coach in program history. She comes to West Long Branch from State College, Pennsylvania. Spent the last two years as an assistant and the head recruiting coordinator at Penn State University. Prior to that, five years at Marquette University. And we'll, we'll sort of touch on that a little bit. So as I once again welcome you uh, for the umpteenth time. Um, and I, I'm gonna start right and say, you know, uh, I believe you've been like a, an assistant coach for 17 years, ever since you graduated college in 2003. So why was the time right for you now to become a head coach and why Monmouth University? Well, first off, thank you for the time. And um, I've, had a, I've had a really great career under some incredible mentors and leaders, but I think the time was now because of Monmouth University and the fact that it is a perfect fit. I really value the private school education. I really value the small class sizes. And I think that's gonna attract the perfect women to come here and compete. I also believe, you know, as an assistant coach, a lot of people will tell you, you know, act like the head coach, act like the job you want, dress for the job you want. Um, but I've really lived the last 17, 18 years as being the best at the job that I had. I wanted to be the best recruiting coordinator in the, in the country. I wanted to be the head coach of recruiting, not the head coach of Penn State. And so I think when you just buy into your role and you work really hard, um, success comes and then opportunities like them, these present themselves. And, and I'm really excited to be a part of this Monmouth community. During the press conference last week announcing your hiring, uh, Monmouth President Leahy acknowledged that women's basketball has sort of been uh, the athletic program on campus that has underperformed uh, in, in the most recent years. The Hawks have not had a winning season in more than a decade, have not made the NCAA tournament since 1983. Of course, you know all these things. So how do you begin to turn around and reverse what has sort of been a losing culture in recent years? Well, yeah, I mean, this place is a sleeping giant and, and the history um, of the other women's sports is really strong. I mean, there are champions walking up and down these hallways left and right. It's crazy. Um, so I'm excited to learn from them and grow with them. Um, but that indicator of, of current success lets me believe that we can also be very successful. I think when you look around the landscape, you know, you study other teams that have risen from the ashes. Take the Golden State Warriors, for example. Um, the person that bought them said, you want to look at a place and say, why aren't they winning? And then put the, light, the right leaders in place to make sure that the infrastructure supports the mission of the leader. And that's what we're going to do here. I think I found the right fit. I think Monmouth found the right leader. And it's going to start by building relationships in the community. It's going to start by building connections with prospects. And it's going to start by player development and skill development and building relations with, relationships with the women on our roster now. I know Carolyn Keeger is one of your mentors. Uh, you were together with her for five years at Marquette, and then the last two at Penn State. She is the head coach there. When you got to Marquette, I don't think they had been all that successful. And if I'm correct, your last three seasons there, you went to the NCAA tournament. So do you almost feel, maybe not exactly, but this is a similar situation? It's very similar. And I think that's why, you know, I was attractive to Monmouth. The blueprint is ready. And now we're just going to get to work and put it into place. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny, I've joked with other people, you know, like our second year at Marquette, I could par compare it to our second year at Penn State. And, you know, the third year, you really want to be the tipping point where you really seize momentum. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you talk about your children. My two-year-old, this one crawled earlier, walked earlier, talked earlier. And so we're bouncing back and forth stuff. So I have that perspective of knowing um, what the first year is going to look and feel like, what the second year should start to to feel like, and then moving into the momentum of building a championship culture. You have the reputation as being an outstanding recruiter. Don't want to embarrass you, but you're known for that. Uh, what will your message be to potential student athletes as to why they should pick Mammoth when the program has had such little success? Well, I think there's a few things we're really going to key on. First and foremost is the value of this education, because uh, these four years are to prepare you for the next 40 of your life. And at a small institution like this, you can major in some things that maybe at other places you couldn't, for example, nursing. So if that's your passion and that's something you wanna pursue, you can do that here and I'm gonna support you in your, in your mission to get your degree. 
The other thing is the opportunity to, to really contribute right away. Um, these high level players don't want to go and sit um, and you're going to have an opportunity to come in. We're going to play fast. We need to increase our level of depth. Um, so there's minutes to be had at Monmouth and we're going to get the right kids to come in and play this, this style. And then that leads me to the next part, which is style of play. We're going to play up tempo. It's a really fun game to watch. It's an even for, more fun game to, to coach and play. And so I think when all of that is in place, um, hopefully my energy and my reputation and character precedes me. Um, and, I, and I'm somebody wanna, they want to do this with. I'm sure from the time you began the interviewing process for this position until now, you've probably had about 300 people tell you, you know how good high school basketball is at the Jersey Shore? It's really good, like the best in New Jersey, and Monmouth needs to keep these players home. Is that a priority for you, or is that just part of the overall recruiting process? It's certainly a priority. Again, the, the first class we had at Marquette scored over 8,000 points, um, and there were three Wisconsin natives, two from Milwaukee. Um, and now I think at Penn State, we have seven or eight Pennsylvania players on the roster. So I want to keep a fence around New Jersey. We'll talk about that, but it's all about fit. So it's the right players from New Jersey that want to be at Monmouth, that want to play for me and with my staff in this style of play. And fit is everything in recruiting. It's everything in life and in, in every team, whether it's your family team or your work team or your basketball team. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about fit. Um, the other thing that, you know, this transfer portal right now is absolutely on fire. And I really believe that you, you don't want to go home if you stay home. A lot of people are like, oh, I might want to come back to the short. Great. Let's get it right the first time. And, and let's figure out a way where you can be really happy at Monmouth and have your parents at the games every night and still have a full collegiate student athlete experience. Well, it's a perfect segue into my next question. Thank you for that, by the way, is normally at the end of a season, you'd look at your roster and you see, okay, how many am I losing to graduation? How many are back? This is my roster next year. What freshmen are coming in? The game has changed dramatically. Um, I know Monmouth is going to get a little boost as uh, Stella Clark, who was an outstanding high school player at Manasquan and spent four years at Northeastern. Is, is returning to the shore area and, and she'll certainly help. But how different do you, do you think your roster will be at the start of next season from what it is today? We're gonna try to infuse a little bit more depth. And so that's, that's gonna be what I'm focusing on now. But really the biggest improvement that I hope you see is in the confidence and in this, just the basic skill set of our team, um, in addition to the pace of play, which includes you know, a greater level of fitness. So the roster per se, the, the people might not change on the roster, but their game is going to change and grow and their, and their demeanor. And we're gonna talk a lot about swagger, um, a confident um, you know, product on the court. And so we've already started addressing that. I'm like, all right, head up, shoulders back. Like you own the gym, let's go. Uh, so there might not be as many new bodies per se, but those bodies are gonna really be different women when they come out on the court in November. Did you play with Swagger? I know, I, I think Wingate University in North Carolina, you're a four-year starter. Were you, were you a Swagger type player? I was, a, I was an energy player. So ironically, um, I played with four All-Americans. Um, I was recruited to be a three. I'm kind of, I'm like six feet tall. I'm kind of a bigger guard and ended up being a point guard. And I was smart enough to know to get them the rock and then make open <laughs> shots when I needed to. I told the girls this week, I'm, I'm really passionate about rebounding. Uh, because it's just an effort thing. And, um, you know, for me, somebody that was kind of that glue player on the team, um, I, I tried to give swagger, not really necessarily exude swagger. So I'm going to, I'm going to be giving high fives and touches and things like that, but come in, come in and do the work and then be confident when we go play. All right. So you've spent the last seven years of your life in either state college, Pennsylvania, or Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So what are you personally most excited about when it comes to moving to the Jersey shore? Oh man, God, you know, I've already fallen in love with the people, um, which I've been blessed to be at great places. Milwaukee's a great city, you know, State College is awesome. It feels very much like home. I'm from West Virginia. Um, I'm excited for the food. Uh, I'm excited for the beach. Um, I've always lived in the mountains and visited the beach and now I get to live at the beach and visit the mountains. Um, I'm excited about the accessibility to really high level talent. Um, I love to go to plays. I'm a, I'm a huge show buff. I will be in Manhattan uh, on, on off time going to Broadway shows. Uh, I love live music. So just the accessibility to, to more of a city feel again. Um, but as you know, West Long Branch is such a small community. So you get the best of both worlds here. And that couldn't be more perfect for me and, and my fiance, Kristen. 
All right, so I'm going to throw one more question at you, and you're not going to like this one. It's not controversial, but it's going to make you think a little bit. Okay. So Ginny Bodges is told you can have lunch or dinner with any three people, past or present. Who are you inviting to be have that meal with you? Three. <laughs> Making you think. Oh. It can't all be softballs. Yeah. Uh, past or present? I'm Famous not great people. at going way back. Okay, one of them's for sure Brene Brown. I'm super into uh, her books and the feeling and all of that stuff. And then I would probably say Oprah because okay. she's just brilliant and a spirit animal. And then maybe one more Kobe. Seated. Who? Maybe Kobe. All right. All right. Mamba Mamba out, right? I'm Mamba. gonna be thinking about this for the next month. I'm gonna, every time I see you, I'm gonna have a new three um because i wasn't ready for that um president obama i mean oh my gosh just go down the line beyonce like i just want these influential leaders in our culture who have built their brand by being authentically them and then have influenced these younger generations to go on and also be themselves and pursue their passions to me is so inspiring so those are the people i want to talk to those are the people i, I want to grow from i am going to give you one more this is my bonus oh number eight get to all do right it. this is a little easier so at the end of next season some point in March of 2022, what would you want people to say about, hey, Monmouth University women's basketball is? Tough. Okay. We're tough. All right. And I think, you know, you talk about recruiting, you talk about momentum. We're going to create a movement here that this area is going to be excited to be a part of and be proud to be a part of. And it's going to start right here on our campus. And then it's going to spread out to West Long Branch and then it's going to spread out to the shore. And then we're going to be in the greater New York, Connecticut, Jersey metro area down to Baltimore. And then we're just going to keep growing and getting better and better. And they're going to see our women out there having a blast and, and, and playing tough. It's a new era for Monmouth University women's basketball and Ginny Bodges is the person in charge. Coach, nice of you to give us a few minutes today. Wish you all the best of Thank luck you. and uh, look forward to chatting with you down the road. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. You've been watching Seven Questions with Ginny Bodges, brought to you by Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above.